Hey everybody, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Today we're gonna get into the coronavirus. More specifically, the name of this virus is SARS-CoV-2. And we're also gonna get into the disease that it causes, COVID-19. We're gonna talk about where Rutland was right and where Rutland was wrong. Please hang on, take a listen, and take some time out of your day. So as we talk about SARS-CoV-2, which is the name of the virus, and we're gonna talk about the disease that it causes, COVID-19. Now, previously, when I had talked about this virus, I had also talked about influenza A and B. And what I meant to say was I wanted to stress the importance of influenza A and B because of its significant prevalence worldwide and because of the significant mortality that it causes worldwide in terms of numbers of people who die from influenza A and B. And this is not to say that coronavirus affects as many people, but what this is to say is that SARS-CoV-2 seems to be, up to this point, much more lethal and much more infectious than influenza A and B. Specifically, what do I mean by that? When you look at the data that's out from Italy right now, and Italy is suffering right now, and I'm praying for Italy to get through this, as this virus is causing a significant burden on its healthcare system. Not only its system, but its doctors. About 10%, maybe even up to 20% of the physicians who come into contact with patients that have the disease COVID-19 caused by SARS-CoV-2, they are obtaining the virus. In the United States, as of this moment, there are two emergency medicine physicians who have obtained the virus and who are battling the virus's symptoms. This is not to say that these physicians are all dying. They're not, but this is to say that these physicians have obtained this virus and are suffering from these symptoms. So the question becomes, as society, what can you do to protect yourself? And as healthcare workers, what can we do to not only protect ourselves, but protect our families? I've written some things down because I wanna make every single point. I wanna make every single point to society and I wanna make every single point to my brothers and sisters out there on the front lines. So let's go through it, all right? My number one piece of advice is obvious. I've said this before, wash your hands. Wash your hands every time you get a chance. When you think about it, wash your hands. Have your little children wash their hands. Keep your hands away from your face. Also, number two, social distancing. Distance yourself from society, all right? I'm not telling you to be an asshole. I'm telling you to distance yourself from society. It's St. Patrick's Day weekend and I'm driving by and I see all these people congregating in the bars, having a good time. That's not social distancing, all right? The whole point of social distancing is this. We wanna flatten that curve. Here's what we mean by that. If the virus is as contagious as it seems to be, more and more people are going to become infected. Now, I am, how old am I? 38 years old, about to be 39 years old. From the ages of zero to 39, I've told you the mortality rate is about 0.2%. Ah, but that doesn't mean that I don't have the virus and I'm not giving it to people that have those risk factors that lead to severe disease. I gotta think about that. I gotta be responsible. So can I social distance myself? Kind of, not from the hospital, but from society. Am I gonna be going out to the bars? Am I gonna be hanging out with my wife at dinner in public places? Not necessarily. Is my babysitter going to be teaching her yoga class? No, she's not. She's gonna stay home because it's necessary for her to do so. So we have to social distance, take the responsibility and distance yourself. If you're sick, stay away from people who have those elevated risk factors. That is people over 50 years old, people who are immunocompromised, they're on prednisone, they have immunocompromising diseases like HIV, like chronic kidney disease, like chronic liver disease or cirrhosis, we gotta stay away from those kind of people. You might ask the question, why do people with kidney disease and people with liver disease become immunocompromised? Here's the answer. The kidney 
is responsible for producing some of the molecules that lead to protecting your body from infectious agents. The liver produces every single protein in your body. And with that being said, some of the molecules it produces protect you from infectious agents. One of those molecules is called complement, which is like the Nerf ball that tags cells or tags infectious agents floating around in your body. So without those two organs working appropriately, you are immunocompromised. So think about that. Don't travel or fly. Do not fly unless absolutely necessary. Why? You've got an enclosed space. You've got a lot of people in that enclosed space. That means that pathogens are spread. People can get sick on planes almost as soon as they land. So please do not fly. Wash your electronic devices. So my phone here, I'm gonna wash 30 times today. I'm gonna use a bleach wipe. I'm gonna use whatever wipe I can find. Yeah, they might not be on the grocery store shelves, but for me, they're in the hospital and I see one in my kitchen not too far away. So wash your electronic devices. The last piece of advice that I'm gonna to give to you is cover your mouth when you cough or when you sneeze. Cover it up and then wash your hands. What washing your hands does is it creates the friction necessary to rub all of the virulent pathogens off of your hand into the sink. My daughter, my seven-year-old, will sing happy birthday to you twice. That's how long we want you to wash your hands. It's for about 20 seconds or sing happy birthday to you twice. Now we're gonna move into my advice for healthcare workers. For healthcare workers, for people out there on the front lines. These are things that I have thought about. Some of these things are in the CDC recommendations. Some of these things are hospital recommendations. And some of these things are just flat out creative things that I've thought of myself being a pulmonary critical care doctor out there taking care of patients with SARS-CoV-2. So number one, Healthcare workers that are gonna be exposed to this virus. I want you to pick some scrubs, a couple of pairs, and wear those two pairs of scrubs daily. Switch them on and off. Here's how I would suggest you handle that. You can wear your regular clothes to work. You have the scrubs in your plastic bag or in some type of bag. You go to work, you change at work. You enter all the patient rooms, you wear the personal protective equipment that your hospital has given you to wear. The gown, the gloves, right? The pappers, the N95 masks, the surgical masks. You wear all those things entering that room and seeing the patient. When you're done with your day, you change, you put the scrubs back in the plastic bag. You put your regular clothes on, you come home. When you enter your house, you take off your shoes that you've worn. And I say pick one or two pairs of shoes that you wanna wear every day. Put them in the garage, put them outside, whatever the case may be. You enter your household, you wash your hands immediately. If you can afford it and if you have it, try to create a space for you where you're gonna shower, where you're going to get dressed every morning because you want to prevent your family from being in this area and potentially becoming infected with this virus. Now, I'm not saying they're gonna get it, but they for damn sure can pass it to other people. In other words, they may not have symptoms, but they may actually have the virus. So it's almost a bit of a self-quarantine area for you. It's an area where you are showering, where you are washing your hands, where you are getting rid of all of the viral pathogens that are on your clothes from all of the patients that you saw. One of the challenges that I have thought about as somebody who works ICU nights is what do you do when you're on call at night? Some of us are able to get some rest. We're able to be efficient at work and we're able to lay down. That's a tough question because you're wearing these scrubs that you've had on all day and you're probably laying down on them. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna change my clothes and actually bring some pajamas and put the scrubs in the plastic bag and lay down with a change of clothes, with some pajamas, all right? Maybe another pair of scrubs and keep those the clean sleeping scrubs. I don't know, but that becomes difficult but these are things that I'm thinking about. What else can you do? I had already said, pick a couple of pairs of shoes and keep those shoes consistent and just wear those shoes in the hospital, even back to your car or what have you, but keep them away from being inside the house. I've said, when you come home, immediately take a shower, immediately take that plastic bag, put it in the washing machine and wash your scrubs, all right? 
wash them, dry them, save them for the next day. I've said create a room for you away from your family. Stay away from the people at home or in your neighborhood that are of high risk. We're talking the elderly, we're talking the immunocompromised. That's who we're talking about. You've got to be responsible and stay away. I, my guess is that some of us have this virus already and we're, we can probably pass it just as easily as probably children are passing it. I've said, and I will continue to say, wash your hands at least every hour if you're not going into patient rooms, but every time you exit a patient's room, wash your hands. Now here's something that's gonna be incredibly difficult. You've gotta be able to have this code discussion. You've gotta be able to have the do not resuscitate discussion with patients and their families who are severely ill from sars cov 2 if the patient is 70, 80, 90 years old and has SARS-CoV-2 and they suffer a code blue as a result of overwhelming inflammation and infection from the virus, odds are they may not survive. We just have to be upfront and forthcoming about how this virus can affect organs and how it can ultimately lead to morbidity and mortality. And if you bring 30 people into this room to perform all of the necessary jobs that will lead to return of spontaneous circulation less than 5% of the time, you are potentially exposing all 30 people to this SARS-CoV-2. I would have a contingency plan for codes. Who is going to enter the room? Who is going to perform what job if the patient remains a full code? I think it's important to write that down and have sort of a SARS-CoV-2 code team separate from our original code teams in the hospital. I do not think that they should be the same because of the risk and exposure to this virus. These are my pieces of advice for civilians. These are my pieces of advice for healthcare providers. I'm taking these seriously, I am sure that there are things that I have left out. But in my little mind, this is what I'm thinking about. I want you guys to protect yourselves. I'm not saying don't go out there on the front line and don't do your job, but I want you to protect yourselves as best you can because we have got to stop the spread of this virus. And I believe that physicians are just as much to blame for the spread as anyone else because we're doing everything that's necessary. One final thought, ditch your personal stethoscope and ditch your white coat, as I'm not wearing one. When you enter those patient rooms, we all know that stethoscopes and white coats carry a significant number of pathogens. And I like the white coat, I think it's great. I love my middle leader white coat. It has my name, says MD, shiny, it's awesome. The middle needle white coat can also withstand a lot of heat, so you can get rid of those pathogens and get rid of those viral particles on the coat. But my suggestion is not to wear your white coat when you enter that patient's room, especially right now. I'm just gonna wear a scrub top or just a t-shirt and some pants every single day. You guys are gonna see me, I'm not gonna have a tie on, I'm not gonna have any dress shoes on. I need to do that because I gotta protect you guys and I gotta protect my little people at home, my wife at home, my babysitters, all those people that I can potentially expose. And I want you guys to do that too. Thank you to everyone who has commented on the channel. Thank you to everyone who has particularly commented on the SARS-CoV-2 content that I have created. I think what it's doing is it's allowing the spread of information that is vital to getting through this piece of history in the United States and in the world and we really appreciate it. Please continue to leave comments and feedback. If there's something I left out where Rutland was wrong, please let me know. I don't mind, I'm not offended. We all learn from our mistakes. We all learn from moments like this in history, and most importantly, we all bounce back even stronger from moments like this in history. If you wanna see more coronavirus content or even more respiratory virus content and infectious disease content, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be continuing to put out more and more content. And in fact, there's going to be more episodes as it pertains to coronavirus, diagnosing, what it looks like, and potential management. Please take the advice seriously and 
hashtag social distancing. Thanks for joining this episode. Trick Jamie.